Eight minutes left in the second. Nicola off to Glenn Lane. I'm John Batten, and in 1978, Canada's national field lacrosse team captured the world championship in England and is so recognized in Canada's Sports Hall of Fame. Join us now for the official presentation of the world plaque to the Hall of Fame. Here is Mr. Harry Red Foster, chairman of the Hall of Fame. I saw that jumping. I thought it was the Australian kangaroos that turned out that they passed you one that day. The other fellow that should have been here today is Bert Pollan. He played in the Man Cup. He was responsible with Harry Price for the thought of the development of Canada's Sports Hall of Fame. Tom West, curator of the Hall of Fame, is accepting display memorabilia from Bob Flintoff, Canada's all-star goaltender. John McCauley, Canada's defensive coach. Bob Allen, head coach, is presenting the game ball that Stan Cockerton scored the winning goal with to win the world championship. And here is Ron Wicks, team general manager. Goaltender, Bob Flintoff, and without that pick, uh, we wouldn't have won it, I guess. Finally, the national field team chairman, Mr. Marshall Spence, presenting the coveted world plaque to Chairman Foster for display in the Hall of Fame. Let's now go to Stockport, England, to see the action that led up to this historical occasion. Here's the Lord Mayor of Stockport. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Can I first welcome the Under Secretary for the Environment, Mr. Ken Marks, who's here to, to represent the, the government and their interest in what is happening today, before I welcome all of you to Stockport, which is undoubtedly the historical center of uh, English lacrosse. You may know, of course, that it was in 1875 that the first English club, Stockport, was founded and from when the game made rapid progress and indeed continues to do so. May I especially welcome the squads from Australia, Canada and the United States of America as well as of course our own team and I'm told they've got a tremendous amount of supporters who have come with them. To you, a very sincere welcome from Stockport. And now the president of International Lacrosse Federation, Mr. Jack Wilkinson. 
On behalf of the International Lacrosse Federation, I thank the four countries taking part in this championship. And I am sure we all are pleased to welcome our friends from overseas. I know the time and effort required to, to prepare a team for games at this level. And after a long hour of training, I hope that all the competitors will have the satisfaction of giving of their best. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in declaring open the 1978 World Cup Championship. May the best team win. The Australians and the United States faced off in Game 1, opening day. won the contest on the field 22 to 17 but the Aussie supporters won the cheering in Canada's opener the traditional coin toss for ends was won by England but the coin toss did not decide this game are some of the greatest sports fans in the world. They cheer for everybody. Canada won the rain played contest 21 to 15. When the Canadians brought out the Stetson hats for presentation to the English side, the English supporters and announcer could not believe it. From here on, everybody wanted a Stetson, and English hat shops needed to find a quick supplier. The Canadian flag flew proudly opening day. In round number two, the Canadians drew the highly favored United States side. Both Canada and the United States won opening day, but Australia and England were still very much in contention. Again, the Canadians lost the coin toss. But unlike opening day, they were not to win the game. Four 
before this championship is over. The Stetsons were presented a second time, but on this occasion, the Canadians were down. They had not only been beaten, they had been embarrassed. General Bobby Allen's solution was to get back to team headquarters and work. He nor the best players in Canada came to lose. After all, Marshall Spence and company did not recruit one of Canada's best coaches because it was going to be easy. And, and Stan is putting pressure there, and it goes over to, to Huntley. Yeah, I don't know if you'd go in with the mic would come barreling over, and you drop that and close it off here and force the pass over there. Bobby Make set the pace. The, the players team. responded Marshall, with increased no concentration and effort. <laughs> The rest of you be ready to pop into a two-on-one situation. Dan, come over here right away. I think you should probably stop and whirl around. Be ready to break right into a gap in here someplace. Get the ball back from Doug Hayes. Or even be open in here someplace. Because they're going to get pressure that way too, right? If, you, if this starts to close in on you, and, and let's, say, uh, let's say Dan Wilson moved into here and he got a pass from Flitoff in here, then he's going to get pressure there. He's going to get pressure there. He's got to wheel around right away, and he's got to have somebody to pass to. If not, he can give it right back to Flintoff again. Back him in the net area. The third round saw Canada beat the competitive Australian team 16 to 13, and the United States squeaked past England 12 to 11. <laughs> tried the L there, Dave suggests we try it. We worked on something like that similar with the, earlier with the four man across the field with a midi back this time. The only thing that's wrong right now is that Fred, you're up there in center field. I don't want you going across center field, okay? Unless it's a two on one situation that's created near side. I prefer you to stay there and be an onside man. We get two defensive, if, uh, if we get a defensive booting up here with the ball and you're gone too, and he goes across and we have to have two midfielders back and I'm afraid we might not have that happen. We're concerned with containing them as much as possible, forcing them to have as many passes as possible, hoping they'll make a mistake. But don't go after their stick and try to steal the ball all the time. Umpires B. Chadwick, Chief Bench Official, and Team Aether. If you don't have anyone from the States at all, you can be assured that uh, it'll be called very closely on uh, a lot of the rough stuff out there, so take that into consideration when you're on the field. The previous day, Australia had won the consolation final, 19 to 9 over England. As Canada readies for the final, the thought on everyone's mind was, have we shaken the previous humiliating loss? Have we regrouped? Sure, we beat the good Australian team in round number three. Sure, we beat the Brits by five, and the Yanks just squeezed by them by one. But it was the Americans who beat us 28 to four.
Americans came out bang, bang, bang to take a three to nothing lead. But the Canadians came back to score the next eight. The gut determination of the Canadian players was very visible. was a hard-fought struggle with the Canadian supporters clapping their team off at halftime with a one-goal lead. At the half, tactician Allen was still at work. He's led at halftime before and knows the game is not over until the final bell. Between you and Hayes, if you can. Get yourself in a position when he's got the ball, so when you get it, you're going to pull man. Randy, you've got to keep that man honest in the middle and keep him going around there. Now, Hazy, when you get it, you've got to step in and pull the man between you and Huntley. Then Huntley's got to pull the one between he and Cockerton, okay? We've got to pull a man all the time. If we don't, then we're, we've nullified what we had going. During the second half, Canada fell behind by two goals. When Stan Cockerton scored to bring Canada within one, Coach Allen calls a timeout. With three and four minutes every time. One loose ball in the corner, had four guys after. We had two defensemen, no help out there at all. And we've thrown it away a couple of times when we had that. It's even, it's all, it's even. One little goal difference. Come on. All you need is smart, relaxed, composed effort out there, not throwing that ball.
to drink a toast to you. We didn't do bad, but I know what we're doing. Did we? Let's now return to the Hall of Fame Sporting and Red Foster. We need support, and lacrosse is our national game, and here we have a chance to make a, a great revival. And I can assure you all that you'll get every support you can from Canada's Sports Hall of Fame, which is a national shrine in Canada for sport. And so when Canadians visit here at the Sports Hall of Fame, they can be justly proud of this display and the story it tells. This film was produced by the Ontario Lacrosse Association with the assistance of the Ministry of Culture and Recreation, Sport and Fitness Division. For more information on lacrosse, contact your provincial association or the Canadian Lacrosse Association.